What's up everyone? Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Preeti Rao and I am both a real estate and a mortgage broker for close to 20 years. Last week when I was at the office, a very interesting conversation started among the agents on interest rate hikes. I realized that many people don't understand the connection with rate hikes and inflation. All they see is Bank of Canada's increasing of the interest rates, which in turn is bringing down the values of properties, which in turn is making their respective lives very difficult. Now, I have done videos before on inflation and if you have not seen those videos please go check it out i promise you're not going to fall asleep but today i decided to talk about inflation and its connection with the rate hikes hopefully my content will not bore you and by the end of this video you may get a clear idea on how all of this works but before i proceed you know the drill make sure to like share tap the bell icon hit the subscription button it gets me motivated to keep you up to date with everything real estate <laughs> Now, to measure inflation, every month, Statistics Canada tracks the prices of a long list of products known as the basket of goods and services. The contents of the basket reflect how much Canadians typically buy for each goods and services provided. The prices of these items add up to measure of average price known as the Consumer Price Index or CPI. Since the CPI is an average measure, it represents the big picture of consumers spending across Canada. It is not the only measure of inflation but it's the most common one used, used by businesses, institutions, and governments. The rise in CPI every year influences the raise many Canadians get in their annual salaries. Now, during the lockdown, prices of many things in the CPI basket were lower than usual. The pandemic led to changes in the behavior of consumers. Demand for services went down, especially things like travel, live entertainment, theaters, restaurants. Since consumers weren't spending on those things, they spent more on goods, and the demand for goods is now outpacing the capacity of its manufacturers and the supply chains. That has driven up the cost for the limited supply of goods and not to forget the shipping costs that also shows up in the price increase. But how is all of this connected to real estate? See, inflation and interest rates tend to move in the same direction because interest rates are the primary tool used by Bank of Canada to manage inflation. A company planning its budget for the next year makes assumptions about what the price of its supplies its rent, its employment salaries are going to go up by. When these costs rise, companies raise prices as well. High inflation means that those prices are climbing quickly and the dollar does not stretch as far. Purchasing power, that means our ability to buy products and services with the money we have, tends to weaken. And that is how high and unpredictable inflation hurts an economy. If incomes don't increase along with the prices of goods, everyone's purchasing power goes down. People buy less and the economy starts to slow. So to achieve the inflation target, Bank of Canada adjusts its key policy interest rates. This prompts banks to increase their interest rates in turn on their deposits, loans and mortgages. Higher interest rates encourage people to save and discourage borrowing and in turn spending. In response, companies increase their prices more slowly and even lower them to encourage demand, which then helps reduce inflation. Now, the entire point is to encourage people to put money in their savings where they are getting a higher rate of return since rates are high and discouraging them from spending on goods and services, bringing the price of these said goods and services to the pre-pandemic era and in turn, curbing inflation. Let's take the real estate market today. The benchmark price of a home in Ontario was $904,800 in August 2022, down 15.9% from its peak in Feb of 2022. The Greater Toronto Area similarly saw a 15.2% decline in prices during the same period, from $1.36 million to $1.12 million. According to CMHC, national average home prices in Canada will fall 14.3% by the second quarter of 2023, with a few more rate hikes on its way if inflation keeps raising its ugly head. So if you like this video, please click on the boxes on the screen. Once again, my name is Preeti Rao and my contact information is in the description box below. Make sure to hit like, share, subscribe and the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to call me because I hold the key that opens the door to your dream home.